Welcome to part two of our premium tank buying guide. The purpose of this video is for us to give you our opinion if a premium vehicle is worth buying or not and worth under. I have a glorious polar bear here with me and we're going to use a rating scale of one to five squirrels. Basically one squirrel is a do not buy, it may be a waste of money, and five is this is a pretty good purchase or a pretty good value. We already did the American and the German tanks in the last video. Part two will be picking up with the Russians, starting with the T-35, which is actually a personal favorite of mine. But that being said, it can be quite frustrating. It is a very large tank. It's not particularly fast and it has very little armor. And at the price of 2100 Golden Eagles, it's pretty expensive for a rank one vehicle. It's, it's, it's very much so a, uh, a vehicle that you come back later on to if you enjoy the soviet line to just have fun at low tiers or if you're a person who likes the whole land ship concept we're gonna give that one a scroll rating of three even though personally in my heart's a five i just could not suggest that to a newer player i think you can spend your money much better than purchasing this thing up next we have the t26 for 250 golden eagles it's a pretty simple little tank very cheap price tag it'll do you well after that we have the t126 uh, this is a good little tank to buy early on simply because it's relatively well armored for its tier and it's a small little nimble guy that has that 45 millimeter gun at low tiers that Russian uh, tanks will have that that uh, make quick work of enemies if you get their flank. 550 golden eagles. We will give it a scroll rating of three basically simply because I think there are some better options at this battle rating, including this guy, the SU-57, which is an American half-track with a 57mm gun attached to it. This thing will punch through anything at this battle rating. It is very maneuverable, has great range, it just lacks in the armor department. But I think you'll have much more success with this thing than over, let's say, the T-126. So for that reason, we'll give it a squirrel rating of 4. After that, we have the BM-8-24. Uh, much like the uh, the rocket tanks of the other nations, such as the Tlaipi and the Panzerwerfer. Um, this one has its fully exposed rockets on its rails, which means if an artillery strike lands near you and a piece of shrapnel finds its way to the rockets, you will explode quite spectacularly. These rockets will also not penetrate most of the Panzer IVs or Panzer threes that you will see. It will be difficult to kill these rockets. It's not impossible, yeah. but it will be difficult. They'll, they'll shrug the rockets off, and all you will have done is poked an angry bear. For 3,850 Golden Eagles for that price tag for a 2.3 battle rating vehicle, we are going to give it a rating of 2. It's it's a it's something you probably will go back for or wait for it to be on sale or if you get a coupon, simply because for a rank 1 vehicle, it's far too expensive and it won't help you progress that far. After that, we have the T3, which is just a Russian Capture Panzer III painted fabulous green. For 700 Golden Eagles, I will give this a school rating of 4 all day long. This is a great little tank. It's a lot of fun, the German tech tree, and it can round out your Russian 2.3 tech tree quite nicely. Yep, it's got that punchy little 50 mil that has access to an APCR round that will literally go through anything that this thing will face if it gets a full, uh, full up tier battle rating. And it has a normal shell that will deal with anything at or below its tier. Now we reach the rank two vehicles, and we will be starting off with one that Bear actually really likes. This, uh, this, the T thirty four, um, the premium one at three seven is actually the first Russian vehicle I had, and I ground out everything I could with it simply because it's a good little tank to have. It's maneuverable, it's punchy, it's armored, and uh, it'll treat you right. It costs nine ninety nine, comes with seven days of premium and a thousand golden eagles so it's a pretty good purchase up next we have the zut-37 this is a tank that i have thoroughly enjoyed in the past so i don't know if it's really called a tank but it's a uh well it's supposed to be an anti-aircraft gun but we've repurposed it it's a really good tank destroyer with 37 millimeter cannon it'll shred a lot of tanks that you see at this battle rating thousand golden eagles yep i will give it a squirrel ranking of four yeah, it's um, the little 37 has the fire rate and 60 mils of penetration to deal with stuff at this tier. The only downside is your turret does not move very fast. Chassis moves pretty well. Oh yeah, it's a nimble little thing. Up next, we have the SMK. If you watch this channel, you've seen lots of videos on this thing because it is one of my personal favorites. 
You have the one two combo in the front here. Decent, maybe above average armor. Moves pretty well for a big girl, and it's a lot of fun. And it's relatively cheap for 1,300 golden eagles compared to the price of the T35. This is what I would purchase if you want a multi turret in. Um, this one is a far better buy compared to the T34 or T35, sorry, simply because it is relatively well armored. It'll move quite well, and it has a the combination of the caliper caliber of guns it has is uh, a really good for a one two combo, as Bo said. Five scroll rating all day long. Love this thing. After that, we have the T34 57 mod 1943 for 1600 golden eagles. This one here is essentially a later version of the T3457 found in the normal Tetri. It has a slightly uh, different gun and a different turret uh, compared to its Tetri counterpart. It is, if you enjoyed the playstyle of the normal T3457, it's not a bad purchase um, for you to get because it's only 0.4 higher, so you can still use both in the same lineup technically. Uh, it is a good little tank to grind with since it's at rank three. It's a T thirty four for high velocity cannon. I mean, it's it's pretty much what you want. Yeah, it's a it's the uh, fifty seven mil high velocity anti tank gun. We will give this a score rating of four. After that, we have the M four A two seventy six millimeter. Now this is kind of difficult for us when we're discussing it because it's two thousand nine hundred eighty golden eagles. It's pretty pricey. It has about a battle rating of five point oh seventy six millimeter gun, which is good. It isn't the jumbo, so it doesn't have the you know armor package that you might find at the six point oh one for the U.S. When you look at this and then you compare it to right now at the T thirty four eighty five, is that five point three battle rating? Yeah, as Bo was saying, compared to its the the uh, Tetri counterpart of the T thirty four eighty five at only point three higher with in my opinion, a much more competitive cannon. Um, it's and the comparative price tag to the T thirty four fifty seven nineteen forty three. It's it's hard to give it a full approval um, just off of price and compared tanks. We're gonna give it a scroll rating of three. Up next, we have the SU one hundred Y, which is just ridiculous. I will first off by saying, if you want to reach out and touch somebody, this is the gun to do it with. I, uh, I initially didn't buy it when it first released into the tech tree. And then I kept hearing about how great it was, how great it was, how great it was. It took me about probably 60 days after it released. I finally picked one up. It's awesome. It's the most fun. Like, you see somebody across the battlefield, you're just like, oh, I'm going to kill him. Boom. Done. At, uh, at, at 5.3, it, uh, it has a very competitive, or has a very punchy gun compared to all the other targets you'll find. You'll, you'll struggle to find something you can't penetrate. And uh, when you penetrate, it, it you'll, they'll know when you hit them. It's satisfying. We will give it a scroll ranking of 5. After that, we have kind of a weird combo we're going to tell you about right now. So you have the KV-1E and the kv 2 z 6 It's a KV-2 that has a long barrel and fires a 107mm shell. And then the KV-1E is an additional armor package put on it. Now, the KV-1E sells for $17.99 with seven days of premium and 2,000 golden eagles, right? So $18. The KV-2 Z6 sells alone for $24.99 with seven days and 1,000 golden eagles. If you go on Steam, you can find a package where you can get these two together for $29.99 plus 1,000 golden eagles. I mean, that, that's quite a good package right there, I think. That, that's a, that package right there, I will give a scroll rating of five. Yeah. That, that package gets you a great deal on the uh, armor that's available. Individually, I'd probably give these two a scroll rating of four, but if you're looking for a really good package for your Russian tech tree and you don't own either of these, yeah. I would pick that up. Yeah, it's a, um, especially for the KV-1E, for a player who's learning some ground forces, the extra 30 millimeter uh, armor package on certain places and the extra 25 on certain places is a, uh, a great way to learn angling and positioning on maps. And the KV-2 Z6 is a very accurate, I mean, that, look at that cannon, it's ridiculous. That, that 107 will reach out and touch anyone on the map, and you'll struggle to find something you can't penetrate at, at uh, its battle rating. Next is the KV-122. To put it simply, this is a 122mm cannon from a IS-2 married to a KV-1 chassis. This vehicle kind of lacks some of the armor that you'd probably be used to from other Russian tanks at this battle rating, but it does have a little bit better maneuverability. I would typically just want the IS-2. And I could not personally see spending the 4,880 Golden Eagles 
to purchase this tank. That being said, we will give it a scroll rating of three. We have the T3485E. It's in a bundle for $29.99 and comes with 15 days of premium. This is a great buy simply because it's a tier four premium of a T3485, which is a com very competitive tank at its battle rating. And you can build and a chicken coop when you're done. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, you can you can make a farming lifestyle once you're done. And uh, it'll help you grind out the other teeth. It'll help you grind out the higher tier Russians, all while still remaining relatively low um, for a high tier vehicle. And uh, its cannon has access to it every type of round you'll need to kill something. And it reloads relatively well, and it'll scoot around the battlefield really well. We will give this guy a squirrel rating of 5. It is hard to find anything wrong with a T-3485. It, it, uh, it won't let you down. After that, we have its big brother, the T-34-100. Personally, it's one of my favorite things in Russian Tech Tree. I kind of struggled to give it a... Uh, I wanted to give it a 5, but I think I have to give it a squirrel rating of 4. The cannon is quite fun. It has a decent reload for the size. Um, the armor, of course, is going to be kind of lacking because you're going to see things like King Tigers, of course, and T-29s, and just those big guns. The T-34 chassis in the hole and the armor cannot uh, provide any protection against that generally, but it does move very well. It is, it's a very balanced weapons package is what i'll say it's um it's not it's more of a support line tank like you'll play this behind t44s and stuff and poke out at moments you feel you can take you can risk taking the shot without taking a hit in return because it's a uh it's a little bit squishy for its tier but it is there's nothing this is a good tank after that we have the t44 122 uh this is essentially if you like the is2 uh, cannon, but you like the T-44's mobility and low profile. The biggest drawback to this thing is the reload. Once you fire that cannon, take out your favorite book, that'd be the biggest drawback to this thing. Other than that, it's a very, very good tank. You really want to pair this with a normal 85mm T-44 or something of the like where they can keep up the fire rate while you're reloading. We will give this a squirrel ranking of 4. Up next is the SU-122P. Personally, I'm not generally in love with this guy at, at, at 6.3 battle rating. Um, it's, it's one of those tanks where you really have to be a tank destroyer and a casemate style player where you don't mind not having a turret. Uh, the gun won't fail you. It's got enough penetration for its tier at 230 millimeters uh, at 10 meters. But um, as it's a uh, SU, it's an SU chassis, so it's going to be a bit more maneuverable than the ISU-122 in the normal Tetri. That's because it doesn't have the armor of the ISU, though. Well, that, that's that's why you play it as a uh, long-range to mid-range support sniper. You don't try to brawl. Um, these the SU lines were never really brawlers, unless you're in the earlier on ones. But this this is something I'd say if you're a fan of the SU and it's you have a coupon or it's on sale, uh, it's probably something you might want to pick up. Otherwise, it's there's some better options for a medium or a heavy tank player. Yeah, it's current price of six thousand ninety gold eagles. You can get the T forty four one twenty two or you get the T thirty four one hundred. And for that reason, we're gonna give it a scroll ranking of three. After that, we have the IS six, the probably most controversial premium that was ever added to this game. Well, it's a it's a late or late to post war concept for a heavy slash breakthrough tank. It has very thick or its armor's not that thick, but it's so well sloped that uh, it will it will shrug off shells if you get if you're top tier, you will shrug off shells left and right. It doesn't have very many frontal weak spots, so if you can just if you can control the pace and of the engagement and keep everything centered in front of you, you will just sit there and eat shots left and right, and you know claim some claim some tank markers. For thirty nine ninety nine thousand gold eagles, seven days of premium. Just because of how well this thing performs, we have to give it a scroll ranking of five. Um, if you're looking to grind out high tier Russian tanks, this is your best option. It's um, it's 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 something for a player who's reached the IS two and IS one level, um, if they want to help buff out the later lines, simply because it is a similar one twenty two to those to the late IS twos, and it's a little bit more forgiving, um, because of the armor profile. After that, we have the recently added Object one twenty. 
which is going for $49.99. 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. I have not had the chance to take this out very much. Um, I know Bear has a lot more seat time than I do, so I'll let him... Uh, I, I was initially not overly excited about this uh, vehicle. I, to me, it just wasn't that intriguing. Uh, on a whim, though, because I needed to grind out some late-tier Russians, and I wanted to push down into the tier sit stuff, I picked this thing up. And it has surprised me with how well it does. It uh, it's it's more maneuverable than I expected for something this small with the horsepower it had. Uh, it can keep up with T54s in terms of maneuverability, even surpass them sometimes. But the gun is the shining uh, part of this tank. It's also the biggest. <laughs> uh, you'll struggle to find like uh, a mouse. You'll see your team yell in chat, "Mouse here, mouse here." You will just roll up and shoot it in the face and walk away. You're like, hold on, I hold my beer, I got this. Um, the ammo choices it has with that heat FS with uh, devastating penetration and post pen effect, and then that AP DS FS, that shell has like zero drop. So if you get cursed or something, you just load that shell and you just point and click. It's a, uh, it's a good little tank. I'm shockingly surprised with how it is. It does have next to no armor. Right? It's, it's, it's not enough to hold off a 50 cal. Any tank you see at this battle rating will, will easily wipe you from the planet. Um, that being said, what is the what is the scroll ranking you'll give it? Four, um, just because of the price and how it's more of a experienced player vehicle. Um, this is not something you did if you're tier two in the Tetri. This is something you did if you're tier three or four and have some experience with these 152s. And that will wrap up our Russian premium tanks. After that, we have the British Tech Tree. And starting off, we have the A13 Mark I, which for 250 Golden Eagles, I will actually give it a scroll ranking of four. It has a very competitive 40 millimeter cannon on it that you will find in the British Tech Tree all the way on a, I believe the 2.7 is the highest battery rating that you'll actually find that gun on. It's very small, very maneuverable, quite fun. Yeah, those, those A13s are very competitive. After that, we have the tank that I'm just going to have to crap on. I'm sorry. I was excited when they added this until I played it. The Independent. It may be the only <laughs> early British tank to actually have an APHE round, I believe, um, that isn't an American Lin-Lease. Uh, I believe so. And uh, and I thought that would be its redeeming feature besides looking like a bad guy from Doctor Who. I don't know what to say about it. It's big, it's slow, it has no armor. Well, it kind of suffers a T-35 fate. Well, it's so much It's so much higher up compared to the T-35. And that gun can't aim very far down. It's a very interesting concept. For 2100 Golden Eagles, and just how it performs, how it's personally performed for me, Lolly bought one of these, he was so excited, and then you could just hear just... His soul being crushed, you know, match after match, trying to play it. So I will give it a scroll ranking of two. Once again, that's our personal opinion. Yeah, for for the price and for what it is, uh, hold on to those eagles. Up next, we have the Cromwell RP3. I kind of struggled with how to rate this thing because if you're running a Cromwell lineup, it's very nice to put this in there because you have the normal Cromwell and then you have this Cromwell. So you kind of have a Cromwell 1-2 package, right? But this thing costs 3,450 Golden Eagles because it has rockets attached to the side of it. But you can't aim them. So depending on whatever ground you're setting on, whatever, um, the chances of hitting a target are are very small. You have to have basically everything go right. Yeah, those, those RP3s were not known for their accuracy when fired from land vehicles. Um, they're fixed to side turret. They do not move up or down. So where they shoot, they shoot. The other issue I had with them is that they like to randomly detonate when a tank shell hits the side of your turret or an arty shell happens to land nearby and then you just cook off like a barbecue. You'll hear the artillery start hitting down and then all of a sudden you hear a boom beside you and someone's turret's not there anymore. Usually me because I run this thing. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a squirrel rating of two. Up next, we have the Firefly Scorpion bundle. Now, this is going to get a little complex because you have some options here. This is a really good tank. I grinded out most of my British tanks with the Firefly Scorpion. It is for sale right now for $26.99 with 15 days of premium. But if you go over to Steam, you get something called the Royal Combined Forces Pack. What do you get? Well, you lose the 15 days of premium, but you get a Wyvern. I think that's a pretty good buy for those two. Yeah, that pack, will it helps you both in the air and ground for grinding. 
Uh, the Sherman Firefly, uh, it's quite quite good. It's got a very good punchy gun. So I I would give that bundle alone. I probably give it a score rating of four. If you buy the Steam bundle, I think that's a five all day long. That's a good value. After that, we have the AC4 Thunderbolt, which is I know he's not here right now, but this is probably Lolly Dragon's either first or second most favorite tank in War Thunder. He does love this thing. It is very competitive. It has very nice slope front armor. Has a 17 pound gun, of course, and it's Australian. Much I'm, I'm think it's going to be much like how the Canadians designed the Ram to have their own tank production. The Australians did this. Um, only difference between the Ram and this thing I'm imagining is we our industry picked up and started making license built Shermans instead of the Ram. This guy's for sale for 2,980 gold eagles. And I would give it a score rating of 4. Really close to 5, but I think it's a 4 in my mind. After that, we have the Black Prince bundle. And that bundle will cost you $39.99 for 15 days. This was one of the original premiums that came out for the British Tech Tree. And it was pretty good back then. And as the game has progressed and more stuff has introduced, I think that it has probably... Uh, if it had a score rating back then, it would have degraded to where the game is currently at. Yeah, this thing needs some tender love and care. Yeah, it, it's it's it'll hold off if it gets a top tier match, but with its battery at sits O, you're liable to see some of the high tier stuff that will laugh at this. The last time we ran this thing for any large amount of time, we were trying to do a video and we did a couple of streams with it. Our tracks kept falling off every I swear every three minutes somebody lost a track. What what Lolly said they were made of butter. I believe was the term. These things throw tracks, already shells, tank hits, whatever. These things tracks would just not stay on. Which isn't a bad thing per se, because it means some the tracks ate the shot instead of your tank crew. This thing has a pretty big falling, and, and I know people enjoy it, but maybe at one point it was a score rating four. Um and and, and recently just how things have progressed, I probably give it a three right now. Yeah, it's it's not the best um it's not the best, but if you're a fan of the Churchills, definitely pick it up, you know, if because if uh, if you're good with the lower tier Churchills, it's time to pass on the same lessons of angle your armor a bit and fire, but it's it's slow, it's big, and it's not overly armored for its tier. After that, we have the STRV-81. So the STRV-81 is a Swedish import of the Mark III Centurion. Uh, and what it has, it has the uh, first generation anti-tank missiles on it, which means they'll be WASD controlled. But the advantage is they're angled to fire uh, relatively upwards compared to the other ATGM vehicles, which means if you're behind a low wall or in a death lade, you can fire them up over the ridge and then guide them in. But it is a Centurion Mark III with a little bit higher bow rating, but that 20 pounder gun will not let you down. Uh, it'll butter most things it sees. $39.99, so same price as the Black Prince. You get a thousand golden eagles and seven days of premium. This is a squirrel rating of five very easily. If you want to grind out your British tech tree, this is a wise decision. It's a uh, it's a good buy. Uh, that 20 pounder is phenomenal to do work with. And it's it's you get rockets on top of having a great gun, so it's a great buy. And that will wrap up our British tech tree. We're going to move over to the Japanese now, and let's start with the Hago Commander for 250 Golden Eagles. Pretty much the same rating we'd be giving to all of the starter kind of premium vehicles. We're going to give it a scroll rating of 3. It's a pretty capable little guy. It's, it's, it's smoke grenade launchers are on the side of the turret facing direct sideways. Well... You learn things as you build tanks. Yeah, as Bo saying, same thing we give every starter premium. It's it's not it's something you put in to round out a lineup and help you get through that initial tier. And for two fifty, it's not a bad buy. So up next, you have the Rogo, and I don't know how to describe this thing to you. And Bear, I know probably won't agree with me. I really wanted to give this a scroll rating of five, but um, I think you wanted to go for three. We're gonna split it and call it a four. Don't ask me why I think this thing's magical, because it's probably not, but I've, I've had a lot of fun in it, and um, and it's pretty confusing. Like, you have this machine gun back here, which I think I've actually gotten a kill with it on a gas truck, which is hilarious. That's one of the, uh, yeah, that's one of the few land ships. It's, it's relatively low priced compared to the other land ships, and uh, 
It just looks really weird, so you'll probably stare the enemy away. So 1,370 Golden Eagles. It should probably be a score rating of 3, but I, we're going to give it a 4. After that, we have the Chiha Short Gun, which is a very big gun on this guy. I believe it's 100 and... What? I'll just look at it right there. 120 millimeter. I almost said 122 for some reason. When you have to blow something up... This is, this is the tank for you if you want to blow up every bunker in sight. It is currently for sale for 1499 1,000 Golden Eagles, 7 days of premium. It's a pretty good purchase. We'll give it a scroll rating of 4. Yep, it's relatively low battle rating, which means that the fact that it only fires HE is not a huge drawback. And uh, it it's relatively well armored. It will take it's a little practice a... to shoot the gun, though. It does not fly on any trajectory that you're pretty much commonly used to, unless you fire a lot of... It's slower than a KV-2, so that should give an idea. After that, we have probably one of our favorites, the Chinu-2. Look at that Look at that turret and that gun on that thing. I'm still weirded out by that machine gun on top. It's probably weirded out by you. Uh, this is for sale for 1,600 Golden Eagles. We will give this easily scroll rating of 5. It's, it's what I use to grind out all my Japanese tanks. After that, we have the Heavy Tank number 6 bundle, which is 2999, 1,000 Golden Eagles, and 7 days of premium. Bear, this doesn't look Japanese. It's a... Uh... It's a tiger that they were going to ship over. So if you like the tiger, you want to grind out some Japanese tanks, there you go. That's, that's basically the best option we give you. We'll give it a scroll rating of four. Up next, we have probably one of my favorite new things added in the recent patch. The ho Re prototype. 3499, 1,000 Golden Eagles, and 7 Days of Premium. Besides the gigantic 105mm cannon, it actually has really good sloped front armor. And it has really thick armor up here. And over here, this thing will actually compete relatively well above this battery. rating. Um, the back of it is pretty soft, and then the cannon actually has pretty decent depression. As the cannon goes down, this um, roof actually moves up so that you can... It's actually pretty genius. They put the cannon and the breach all the way basically at the top of the thing. And then when the cannon needs to point down, the breach will go up through a... I guess you call it like a... Hatch? Hatch, yeah. It's pretty genius. It, uh, this thing... I like what they did with it in terms it, it of design. It maximized the crew compartment. Squirrel rating of five. I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of saying my favorite thing added in the recent patch might be this. Might be this. And that will wrap up our Japanese tanks. And we will go back because of the recent patch. They added a couple vehicles and we missed one on the last time we'll get to. Up first yeah. is the American T-114. For me, this thing has been an emotional roller coaster. When you sneak up behind a, a king tiger or a panther or whatever, and you can pop the heat shell on the side, and it kills the crew, and it kills the tank, it's very enjoyable. A lot of fun. It's very small, very maneuverable, and it can be quite fun. Or it can be the most frustrating thing you've ever played, because it has no armor, and it has two crew members. So if either of these guys die, it's over. But you do get crew replacement. So it's kind of confusing by that. But the main issue I've noticed is that when an artillery shell lands nearby, you have these three shells, or two shells, up here. Those things, I've had the worst luck with them cooking off. I'll have people shooting through smoke, and they'll just accidentally hit it, and it cooks off. Artillery shells land across the street, let's say, what, 20, 30 meters away, and a piece of fragment hits it, cooks off, etc., etc. 8,020 golden eagles. So before I give a rating, I'll let Bear share his thoughts. I haven't seen very many of them. Um, it is a auto-loading system, so you get, I, I believe it's a three-round burst, but it's a relatively low-velocity gun for its tier. It fires about the same shell speed as a KV-2 to give an idea of drop, but it does have enough penetration to deal with most anything it'll see. But you have to try to avoid sloped armor. Yeah, you want to avoid sloped armor, spaced armor, and you really just want to play this thing almost, not quite passively, but you never want to be the focus. When something's engaging something, that's when you want to strike in and, and flank from the side. Yeah, it's very opportunistic. This is not a main battle tank in any comparison. You will not take people on head on. If you do, you need to be the most amazing shot. You need to be Tokyo drifting around. After that, we will go to the German tech tree and we will hit the rec and we will talk about the recently added KPZ M47. It comes in a bundle. For forty nine ninety nine, 
2,000 Golden Eagles in 15 days. It's basically just an M47. I don't know, Bear, if there's any German changes you want to talk about or... Uh, none that I'm aware of. It's a, uh, it's a good little thing to to pick up to grind out further down the line. It's $50, though. So for that reason, I'll probably get the score rating of 4. Yeah, it's it's a bit pricey, but it it's a good little premium. It's good. It is very good. It's just a little pricey. And we will finish up with the tank I forgot somehow last time. I don't know how I did it, but I managed it. The KV-1B. I apologize for missing it last time, but here it is now. We will give it a squirrel rating of 5. This thing has really decent armor. It moves very well for its size. And it has the German 75mm cannon on it. Um, it's hard to find many things to really knock on it. Um, it's got a very good gun uh, mounted onto a very strong chassis. It's the best of two worlds, German firepower and Russian armor. There's nothing left to be desired. So I hope that helps with your opinions. If you're kind of looking at something, I know War Thunder has a big sell coming up shortly in the next month. Um, so I hope this helps you in your future decisions. If you decide to purchase anything, of course, War Thunder is free to play, so you don't have to. But um, hopefully this helps you get the most out of your dollar if you do decide to invest in something for your War Thunder progress. So thank you for listening and watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Myself and Bear will be watching the comments to help you out. And I'm sure there's other viewers who will help, who will happily give you their opinion of certain things, you know, because we're, we're, it's just our opinion. And in the yeah. end, this is by no means a definite. We're not the developers. We're just two guys who play the game a lot. So that that's, and that's the best we can do is to share with you our experiences with them. So I hope it helps you out. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.